G'day, I'm Greg and welcome to the shed. The William Hunt Vertical Slaughter, part two. Uh, I think it's over a year since I last did a video on this. But there's a good reason why I'm doing a second one. and some bangs and it needs a bit of first aid <coughs> but now that it moves it's easier to get apart so what we'll do is we'll uh, have a bit of a look around it um, now that it runs and it's got as you heard it's got a, a nice clunk in it which uh, we'll have a bit of a look while it's running and see if we can see what that is so we'll turn you off and move you into a different position so there's a fair bit going, been going on in the shed, so the place is a fair mess at the moment. Now this is a brake band. Which when I release it, everything's pretty good. So we need to do something about holding that up. It's got a little pointer at the top here, which is meant to have a spring on it by the looks of it. So uh, let's fire it up again and have a bit of a look at running. decided to go freehand. Up the back here we have the eccentric or the cam eccentric. Um, now that's missing as is the lever arm which comes down to this arm which drives your cams uh, as you would normally get on a shaper. Uh, so those cams <coughs> come down here there's a gear mesh in here so that as this shaft rotates it drives this and then there's a key in here and you can't see it because it's on the bottom um, of a slightly bent shaft and there's a key in here so between this key and that key and then this is meant this has got a keyway in it which is meant to come over and match up with this here which I can't find the key on 
<coughs> but it doesn't matter. So basically, oh, that's the foot pedal for the brake unit. So basically, depending on what you decide to engage, you can drive the table in the y-axis, you can drive the table in the x-axis, and you can drive the rotary table as well. Now this t rotary table also, you can see the worm up there for the rotary table, this rotary table can also be tilted. But you've got to do that old school. So uh, there's that bit. <coughs> it's obviously had a conrod failure at some point in time because that conrod's been flame cut. Like a shaper, it has a sh stroke adjuster. This is your stroke adjuster. You wind it in and out. We'll go around the other side because we can see it. Here's our stroke adjuster. Notice I'm actually, the machine's still plugged in. There's the control switch. The machine's still plugged in, so I'm not putting my hands in there too far, close, just in case. Although I'm the only one here. Um, so what you do is you adjust that, or you loosen, loosen off your lock nut. Or might be these two yet. I've still got to work it out because I haven't tried it. And you adjust that in and out, which will move this in and out, which will dictate the length of your stroke. <coughs> The uh, stroke position is set up the top there, so you loosen that nut off, and then you adjust your stroke position with the hand wheel up the top, which means that you've got to stand on the machine to do it, which OH and S will be a little grumpy about. This here is a backstop for your tooling. So what you do is you set your tooling to where you want it, height-wise. Um, Let's slide this one in. Okay, so we slide that in and we get to the height that we want and then you have a backstop to stop it bouncing out. So uh, this is, uh, this tool was in it when I got it. As you can see, uh, someone's done quite a nice job of making up a bit of uh, handmade tooling. So, uh, yeah, it's not quite so seized as it used to be. Um, I'll strip it down and we'll have a look at it. Uh, actually, I'll turn you off for a sec. I was going to, uh, I was going to plug it, but what I thought I'd do, I turned the power off because I was going to unplug it. There we go. We turn back on again.
was just a brake check and put my foot on the brake, it actually stopped it. So, uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> now when I get some time, in between the uh, little grinder that uh, I've done a video on, the 24 inch little grinder, and this little grinder I'll probably get going first. This will probably be my next project. I've still got the Elliott Mill there, which I need to uh, give some love. And uh, there's just stuff everywhere in here, and I'm trying to make a living as well. Um, the shaper, I've hardly put a hand on in the last few months anyway, because I've been too busy. But uh, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and uh, feel free to make comments below. Don't bother telling me that I shouldn't touch the brake band. Sometimes we know we shouldn't do it, but you'll notice that no gloves, sleeves up, fingers, fingertips only, pulled it back. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's not what you do, folks, it's how you do it. Just remember that. There is two ways to do things, safely and dangerously. And just because one person thinks it's dangerous, that's the limit of their skill set. Some people can do stuff that's very dangerous in absolute safety because that's their skill set. Us people that blow things up for a living, tell me that's not dangerous. It's not dangerous if you know what you're doing. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.